Welcome in, everybody. It's the coach. This is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got what should be an interesting matchup between the Indianapolis Colts and the New York Jets. With that, we head up to MetLife Stadium as we'll hand it over to the two men that'll call the action, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. From the stadium that hosted Super Bowl 48 back in 2014, there's a look at MetLife Stadium here in East Rutherford. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it, this crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Indianapolis Colts and the New York Jets. With my good friend Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we have arrived at another new season. I had a little more pep in my step this morning. <laughs> I know you did as well. Here we go. Yeah, when you went out for your five-mile jog, you were flying. <laughs> you did it in record time because you were psyched up about this game. But let's be frank about it. No more radio shows. No more podcasts. No more just predicting what's going to happen. Now we get to see it on the field. Here's the punter, Rigoberto Sanchez, on to get us started. And in front of a raucous crowd, this one is underway. This is taken just shy of the 10 here. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. So now here comes the Jet offense as they get ready to take over. They'll be led out by a man drafted in the third round in 2019 from West Virginia. It's Will Greer. They will start this drive with Ford. Able to shake free for about seven up to the 35. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. A play fake. Now Greer to throw. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball. And now they face a third down. The offensive starters now for the Jets. And last night, we were discussing some of the changes they've made offensively during the offseason. And we know it helps for them to have the first game at home. Hopefully this crowd, which we saw coming in, they've been here for a while, ready to go. You and I should have joined the tailgates, that's for sure. They're going to give them plenty of encouragement. They'll try and ride that wave and get their first victory of the year. It's a gain of three, and it gets in the first. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Got his man there. It's Wallace complete. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. And the big meet on the D-line. We'll see how they do today. And I'd hate to be an offensive lineman having to deal with these guys. They come in hungry, mean, and confident. They think that no one can block them. Hey, hey, tight ends right. Watch tight end. Three down, three down. To throw on second and six. Greer. Blitz coming and down he goes. Get off the train tracks, baby. Get off the train tracks. Now that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football. Led to a sack. And that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. And this won't be enough. A good secure tackle, and they stop him a few yards shy at the 46. Seven yards on the carry there, but now they're staring at fourth down. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. Pick it up! 
Now a play fake here on first down. And his throw's going to be incomplete. And here are the Colts' offensive starters. Obviously a tough test for this offense right out of the gate. Road game in game one of the new year. Conventional wisdom says, go slow, take care of the football. I think in this case, attack early and get the home team back on their heels. They'll run it here. This is Marlon Mack. And he'll get only a couple up to the 22. And the defense for New York. Leonard Woods was one of the most fun players for me to watch in college football. And when he came out in the NFL draft, I kept telling people, here's why I think he's going to be good. Excellent movement skills, light on his feet, also has the ability to bull rush people inside. But I loved his hands, the ability to get offensive blockers' hands off of him and then get his hands on opposing ball carriers. He'll drop to throw. And the Jets pressure too much as down he goes. Clinton Williams drops him for a loss of 10, and it's going to be fourth and long. Well, we knew this guy wasn't especially fleet of foot, but he tried to conjure up some escapability, but there was no way he was getting away on that one. And the punt team on now as this one's sent away. On the return is Williams. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Jets will take over first and 10. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10 at the 40. Off play action, Greer. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. On the ground, it's Ford. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. Greer on third down. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. You ready? You ready? We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with the football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now, looking at a third and three. He goes underneath the Drake. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And he's going to miss this one. That is no good. Well outside the left upright. And this will remain a scoreless game. Two sides to every coin. This is the bad side of missing the 58-yarder. Now they start at the 48. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Nine yards is the pick up there. And they'll have a second and one. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. A bad false start penalty there. Now second and six. He'll look to throw. Complete to Hilton. Give him two yards on that play. And just like that, it's third down. Out of the gun now on third down. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. And New York set to take the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. 
And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. And yeah, this one will go to the 28-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. A first carry for Kenyon Drake. And that one going nowhere from the start as he's met in the backfield and goes backwards. That'll back him up two yards and also bring up fourth. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. And a nice special teams job here. This is going to be down inside the 10 at the 7-yard line. So they'll play the field position game here as a very nice punt is going to pin them back. Yeah, it's almost like watching a game of tennis, or do you prefer ping pong, you know, back and forth like that? That definitely was excellent, wasn't it? They'll start on the ground with Mack. And he'll take this forward only up to about the 7. The linebacker, C.J. Mosley, in on the stop. On second down, it's Mack. Eight yards on the run there, and that leaves him with third and just a couple. They'll try and run for this with Mack. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. A nice job defensively, and it likely forces a punt situation on fourth. I apologize in advance, partner, but the beef eaters on the interior of this D-line, you just know they were licking their chops on third and short. And yes, they were rewarded with a tasty dish, stuffing that one short of a first down. Well, we got beef eaters licking their chops and tasty dish in one fell swoop. I did apologize in advance, didn't I? Yeah, you did. That line's not eating tofu, I'll tell you that much for free. Drake will start the drive on the ground. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. On second and seven, Greer. This pass going to be caught by Hardman. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. 22 yards there, a first down. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 32-yard line. Draw play to Ford. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. On second down now, it's Drake, and he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. First red zone opportunity now for the Jets. They come up first and 10 at the 16. And he'll get seven yards from the 17 to the 10 before he's taken down. No score after one on EA Sports. On second down, it's Drake. Get it, get it, get it. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Now as we look down, it appears we've got a Jet shaken up on the play. Huh, hate to see this. Week one of the season. We'll be back. Down. 70. Indy. Hey, we heavy on the edges. Heavy on the edges. Run. They'll try and run for it with Ford. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. So they're backed up to the three-yard line, second and goal. They'll try to run this one in. Fighting his way in for a Jets touchdown. 
A three-yard touchdown run as his guys are first out of the scoreboard here this afternoon. On that sideline, they're saying that was more like it. The first down run went backwards, that time into the end zone. And I like their little bit of courage in play calling, too, because after an unsuccessful run, especially one where you lose yardage, you oftentimes go right to throw in the football. They came right back with a running play, and it paid off handsomely. Extra point by Seibert, up and good, and that makes the score 7-0. So that drive in total eight plays. And it ends with a three-yard scoring run. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. This one taken from the seven. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. The results for them so far not that great. Well... Not good at all. Three drives, three punts. Yeah, and now what you're doing is you're looking at your play sheet. You're trying to figure out what you're going against defensively. I wonder, are they showing them something they haven't seen or anticipated in practice and maybe that's throwing them off? Or do they just have to go to a different play calling section and try and run some offense that way? After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Now it's Mack, draw play. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. No gain that time, and it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. Back to throw here. And the throw there going to be incomplete. The touch and time are critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. And now let's talk about Kenyon Drake. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. Now this one to his running back out of the backfield, and he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. That one a first down pickup of eight. Greer now hitting on 80% of his passes in the early going. Eight of 10. It's first down. They try to run on first down, but this defense says no dice. They stop him a couple yards behind the line of scrimmage. But well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. On second down, it's Drake. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 12 yards there, and the Jets have a first. That's how you get right up off of the map, because on the last play, they stoned him in the backfield and dropped him for a loss. But he's the type of guy that scared me a little bit, because he's not daunted. Just got right back up, showed some confidence, and picked up a first down with his very next run. On first down. It's Ford looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. On second down now, it's Ford. And a good pick up there. He gets about six up to midfield. Defense. Yeah, that one was relatively easy to see. I noticed that from up here. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot, does it? Sometimes you get multiples. What I always love on these offsides is when each side points at the other. Hey, you did it. No, you did it. They deciphered that one correctly. Five yards on first down, but now just a one-yard pickup there on second. The Jets on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and four. Here's Greer into the hands of his receiver, Anderson. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. Go, All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. 
Marlon Mack now heading back out there. They haven't been able to get him on track. They haven't been able to get this offense on track. No points so far. Maybe it's time to start doing a few different things. Throwing the ball a little bit, maybe featuring other people touching it for a while, and then you've got a chance to come back to him when things have changed a little bit. They have to make an adjustment. Well, still time for him here as we sit in the second quarter. Now a run with Mack. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that one looked pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. And now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Looking to throw. He's going to wind up and air it out. And that'll wind up incomplete. Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. On second down, here's a run with Mack. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Now back to throw. And he's got his man, Hilton. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence. When in doubt, find your veterans. He used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, know, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this. When he was young, he thought the crap. And at the seven-yard line, the catch is made. And they do finally get him. But he makes it all the way to the six. For an offense that has not found the end zone yet, that's a big play. There's the spark right there. The big play that they needed. Now they've got to go ahead and finish this drive and put this ball in the end zone. The Colts with a first red zone opportunity of the ball game. They've got a first and goal to go at the seventh. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. T.Y. Hilton, the intended receiver. But it'll be second and goal. Second and six. Now he's got it. Five yards that time on the completion. And now it's third and goal. The Colts on third down. Just one for five to this point. This is third and goal. They'll run it with Mack, and he takes it in for a Colt score. Marlon Mack taking it in as they are now on the board here in the first half. Able to punch it in on third down makes it easier for those guys on the sideline. They didn't have a fourth down decision to make. Yeah, could you feel the exhale? Because they were already thinking ahead as all the good coaching staffs do anticipating what we have to make the call. They already had it lined up, never even got to it. Point after, right down the middle. And we are tied at seven. That ties the game at seven. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25 yard line. And New York set to take the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. From the 31, Greer. And that is incomplete. The Jets on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and four. From the gun on third down, Greer. Hard throw, incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. 
That'll be a 44-yard boot, just a yard on the return as he's covered up quickly. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. From the 21, it's second and 10. Second and 10. Wide open receiver complete. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. They'll set up to throw. Into the hands of his running back, Marlon Mack. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. Now they'll try to convert on third and six after the four-yard completion. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And good pressure defensively to stop him for a loss of a couple. Now there's also a flag to go with it. So they decline it as that will bring up four. And I know that yardage and field position are keys to any game played, but you've got to consider downs when you're talking about penalties. And they wisely did not take that one and made it fourth down. They'll run on first down. Ford. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. On the stop, Breland speaks. The rush defense stout on first down. Here's second and 10 from the 20. They'll run with Drake. And he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. And he's able to get most of what he needed on the carry there. Seven yards on the gain, and it's third and two now. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half, all knotted up at seven. We remind you that coming up in two minutes, we'll again head down to visit with Jonathan Coachman in Orlando back for another year. He'll have scores from around the NFL here on this opening weekend. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. A nice first down pickup on a gain of six. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Check curls, check curls, check curls. Greer to throw on third and one. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. On first down, Drake, and down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. And it's a rush to the line right now for the Jets. From just shy of midfield, Greer, he's going to go for a big play downfield. It's been my observation, there's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. The offense here not budging. They're going to fight for it on fourth and inches. Now it's Greer. Incomplete, and we're down to eight seconds now. The Jets try it, but the fourth down play doesn't work. And the Colts are going to take over with a football. They'll try and start this drive in the air. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. They'll throw now on the final play. He's going to take a shot at the end zone. Why not? And oh, it'll be intercepted. 
Picked off by Jamal Adams. So we've reached halftime here on opening weekend. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome back to football, everybody. We've got a full slate of 16 games here to start the new season. So let's take our first trip around the NFL. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. Meanwhile, in our game, each team able to manage just one touchdown apiece. 7-7 is our score. And for the call of the second half, we send it back to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. We'll see if week one fatigue becomes any kind of a factor as we are back underway in the second half. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Fresh out of the locker room, they hit him with a gain of over 20. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. They'll run on first down with Marlon Mack. And he'll take it across midfield down into Jet territory. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. They'll go again here with Mack. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. A gain of five. Good enough for the first down. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. He's going to go into double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 12. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted, on the job training so he's got to take this feedback that he's getting negative or otherwise and turn it into positives moving forward so here's the Jets offense now as they get ready for their first possession of the second half their defense did its job yielded no points now it's the offense's turn and how much fun is that when you set things up to start a half and you just tell you guys hey if you can shut them down get it back for our offense we can roll and they played out perfectly. Now, can the offense do what they wanted to do at the half, which is find those weaknesses and now attack them and score some points. And break this tie. On first down, it's Greer. He's able to find Wallace. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Jets move the chains. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. On play action, Greer to throw it. Herndon's got it complete. Play three of the drive, not as successful. They go backwards after those two first down gains. That pass play wound up for negative yardage, so here's second and 11. Greer sets to throw. Throw complete to Herndon. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. The last two plays each lose a yard. They'll try to move forward here on third and 12. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. Roughing the passer, defense. Well, instead of fourth down after the incompletion, it'll be first down roughing the passer. 
Coaches love their defenses to be aggressive, but they want them to be smart as well. Have to leave the quarterback alone at a certain point. Had a bit of a lane there, took advantage of it. Give them seven there on the first down carry. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. From the 39, Greer. That'll be taken in by Anderson. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Play action. It's Greer. It's complete to Drake. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Give him six on the play, and it'll be a second down. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Completes it to Hardman. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. Back to throw, Greer. A bullet throw, but incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. So he missed that field goal earlier, but he says not this time. Able to knock it through, give his guys three. I like his poise. I like his confidence, his belief in himself. Sometimes when you miss that first one, you'll see a lot of guys sag, and they can't make the next one. Not in this case. Stepped right up like a pro. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And he's got the hook up to Moore. A gain of 11 that time and a Colts first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. He'll look to throw. And he can't quite bring it in. Might have heard footsteps there across the middle. Second down. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. This is Mack on the counter. Looking for an opening, not much there. He'll get it to the 39. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. Back to throw. This one complete to Devin Funches. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. This quarterback now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and 10. They got Colton Miller that time, the first round pick from 2018. A false start backs him up five, first and 15. Now Mack. And they can't corral him. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. It'll be a gain of 17 and an Indianapolis first down. So in jet territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 39-yard line. On first down, they'll stay with Mack on the ground. And little room to maneuver there. He gets it down to about the 39. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. On second down, it's Mack. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. So that'll back him up five. After the false start, sets up a third and nine. They'll look to throw. He's got it to Hilton. And they'll get him down at about the 37, well short of the first. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. Out of bounds and close. The question, was it a touchback? No. They'll say it crossed out at the two-yard line. Excellent placement. And off that bounce, Charles, I didn't know where it was going to go. It can be an inexact science as to where they place it, but they say the two-yard line. Yeah, I don't know how they really determined that. And let's face it, at the end of that play, one side's going to be happy, the other team's going to be unhappy. So, what did they do, shorten the hypotenuse? I mean, how did they figure that out? You know that stuff. You're the smart guy. Oh, that's you, partner. They'll run with Penny. Trying to keep those big legs churning, but he's going to go down in the backfield. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and it'll be third down. All right, let's go ahead and detail this situation here. Third and long coming up. Back near your own goal line. 
I would be very hesitant about throwing the football in this situation. Maybe just run, run up the middle. Yeah, I think that that might be the spot for them. You got to try and find some space for your punter because you don't want him backed up where he has to alter what he does. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Greer got his man there. It's Wallace complete. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And it'll bring up a second and 13. To throw again on second down. Greer, he's got Herndon. His tight end. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. On third and short, Drake. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. Three yards there. Good enough to keep the drive moving. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower, that front seven reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing. Slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Back to the air, Greer on second down. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Ford. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. And give him about three as he gets it down to the 22-yard line. From the 22, Greer. And he whips that one incomplete there. Nicole Hardman, the intended target. And that takes us from second to third down. Throwing on third down, Greer. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. 11 more yards there, and this methodical drive continues. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Just week one, but already plenty of intrigue with the games going on, and this one no different as we come up on a first and 10. Now Drake, and he'll fight his way down inside the 10 to the nine yard line. Two yards on the pickup there, it'll be second and eight. Off play action, Greer. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Here's Greer. Throw left side complete. It's Ford. It'll be a two-yard gain, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. They got the completion, but they didn't get the first down. So you got to think if you're on the defensive side of the ball, you're pretty happy with what you just accomplished there. Yeah, guy, like you said, got him out of bounds, stopped the clock, kept him short of the marker. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, they're a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. And a touchdown in the other direction. All of a sudden, they're down. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Now this is Hilton on the receiving end. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. This quarterback now a perfect eight for eight to start the second half. Not bad. First and ten. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. He was trying to go back to Moore there, and that'll bring up second down. 
Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Big play coming up. Here's third and 10. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. Wide open receiver complete. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets 30. So in Jet territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 30-yard line. They'll look to throw here. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. They run the counter. Mack. I know exactly what's going to be said about that. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Marlon Mack. Already his second touchdown here in this opening weekend. And now they can recapture the lead if they can make the PAT. He's having a nice little game. Maybe already has an eye on that third touchdown. And how about what our producer, Christian McLeod, likes to say when they've scored touchdowns like this? He's put a tent up in Touchdown City. Extra point attempt to come here. And they have taken the lead here in this fourth quarter. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And New York set to take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. Nothing on the screen that time. Now it's third down. They wound up getting nothing out of that second down completion. So now here's third and ten. They run with Ford. And he's going to come up a bit short. He needed to get to the 35 for the first, but he only makes it to the 34. Nine yards on the carry there, but it'll be fourth down now. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. So a change of possession here on the punt, and the Colts are going to take over, albeit deep in their own territory. Some good games going on in the early window. This might be the best of the bunch. On first down, they'll start out with Mack. And from the 15, they're able to work this up to the 20 for a pickup of a handful. They go right back to Mack. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. The Colts on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This will be third and five. He'll look to throw. He's going to go deep for Funches. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Critical play in this football game, because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. It has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. Officially, that'll be a 63-yard punt. Well done. And that will come the offense as they take over. Now Greer. And he rifles one incomplete. Robbie Anderson, the man he was looking for. And that'll bring up second down. Once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. From the gun on third down, Greer. And he's got it complete to Anderson. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. Now, that's going to be a tough one to explain when they get together to watch a game film, isn't it? I mean, they had the right call. 
had the out route. He's got to know where the first down sticks are, yet he steps out of bounds that close. Not their best play. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. It's a loss of 10 yards on the play. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. He'll drop to throw. He completes this one to Mack. And he'll be about a full yard shy of the 20 at the 19-yard line. Give him three on the play. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Encroachment defense. A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game for them, but it's also a reaction game. And they reacted poorly on that one. And the penalty helps, but not a whole lot. It's still third and long. Looking to throw. Into the hands of his running back, Marlon Mack. And he'll be brought down at the 28, and that is well short of the first. Call it a gain of five, and it'll be fourth down. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. The New York offense taking over for their next possession. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, you realize it hasn't worked <laughs> go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Julian Love, the rookie from Notre Dame, there to get a hand in. On third down, four, and that's not nearly going to be enough. Stopped at the 22, and he needed plenty more. Give him three yards there, as that'll take us to fourth down. We often talk of situational football. Let's just call it team football. The defense did their job, got off the field, brought the punting situation, so they're turning the ball back over to their offense. You think those guys would get along very well right now? Of course they will. Defense helped the offense, and that's their turn to take it downfield. They've gone to the fourth quarter now in Dallas and really pouring it on now with the Cowboys. A win would be their second on the young season. A run by Mack to start the drive and taking it across midfield and inside the 45. That one for Indianapolis resulting in 15 yards and a fresh set of downs. Right here, right here. Offensive line wasn't set. There's the flag, and five yards back they go. Quarterback has to look around and make sure that his team is ready to go. Sometimes the quarterbacks go faster than is necessary. A full five-yard loss that time. It's going to make second down pretty tough. They run on first down as they're able to get this forward for about four. Four yards there on the carry. Gets it back to second and 11. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And again, the run defense stout this time. He maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, but no more. Back to throw here. And he finds a man on the crossing route. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets' 22-yard line. They're not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Fourth quarter, two minutes on the clock in a tight one-point game. Let's go. Now a play fake here on first down. That is caught inside the five. And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Touchdown! 
A 22-yard touchdown grab. And the Colts, they add on to their advantage. Good throw there, and I don't want to blow it too out of proportion, but he looks a lot more comfortable in his second season. You can tell he put the work in in the offseason, and what I mean by that is understanding the playbook, not just the plays and how to execute them, but how to do it against a variety of defenses, also understands his team better, what they can and cannot do. You can see the confidence rising in him as he plays. They get one more as the extra points up and good. And that will ensure that it will take a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie it. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. He's back to throw. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. They'll look to throw. Herndon's got it complete. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. The Jets are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. And that will be incomplete. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They snap it to Greer. What a great sequence by this defense so far. They've given him nowhere to go with the football. And they just have to make it stand up one more time because it appears that they've got their number. Can they not have a slip up here and allow the touchdown? So now let's reset here, Charles. They do have two timeouts left, so they can stop the clock twice. This one's not quite over yet. No, and what you're doing on defense, you're going to use both timeouts, obviously. But you've got to call defenses are going to force the issue early, meaning you want that play over fast. You don't want to give them time to dance around in the backfield or run a wide sweep. They'll take off time. Blitz them, put pressure on them, make sure that play ends quickly so that you can go ahead and keep moving. The Jets going to go ahead and use their final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. And he's able to work it here to the 8-yard line. 10 yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. An ideal down and distance to try to finish this thing off. Second and inches. Clock counting down toward 40 seconds as they take the knee. They go down to a knee, and the new campaign off to a good start. It's a win here in week one. So this one winds up in Indianapolis victory. And with that, our journey begins, Charles. Week one in the books. Going to be a great season. Oh, man, so much to look forward to. Isn't it nice to get a really good game right out of the gate? Preseason behind us. All these games count now, don't they? Yeah, this is the exciting time with just one week gone and plenty of weeks to come. So for Indianapolis, not much to complain about here. They come in and steal a victory in a tough place to play on a Sunday night. And they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for the Jets, they obviously fall to 0-1 with the defeat. And they'll look to get back in the winning column next week as they head to Foxborough to face off against the New England Patriots. Thanks for tuning in.